I received a, uh, a message from a friend of mine yesterday that whose sister has a sister that's a missionary in Africa, whose sister is a missionary in uh, Afghanistan. Today, 230 something souls, people, uh, men, women, and children are to be executed this afternoon. And God knows where else in the world. So in, a, in my prayer time, what the Lord has put on my heart is from this diary of St. Faustina, which is, you know, sometimes no matter how much we know, no matter how spiritual we are, we just need someone to pull in our thoughts, someone like the Lord to pull in our thoughts to pray with power. There's nothing stronger than a praying people of God. There's nothing stronger, nothing more powerful. No devil, no Satan himself is more powerful than God and his people. So I just want to place these couple of things that the Lord put in my heart to share with you to give you a directive and a clear focus to meditate or to think about as you go about your days in a way to pray effectively, powerfully. Not that your, your prayers are not, but in a powerful, effective way for our times and for what's going on in the world. And I understand that people are far away from us, but no matter what, one day we are all going to be together. We are all going to be standing in the midst of God's presence. And we all bleed. We all bleed. We all suffer together. Maybe you don't like somebody. Maybe somebody's hurt you. Whatever the case may be, go beyond that and do what the Lord told me to do. When someone has hurt me and I found it difficult to pray for them and I knew I needed to, I had to, I was called by God to do that. Look over everything into the eyes of Jesus Christ because God created every human being, black, white, yellow, red, whatever the color, and we are all his children. That makes us brothers and sisters in Christ. So it is with a focused prayer that God is calling Jesus Christ. The divine mercy is calling us to pray in union with Our Lady for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the whole world, but especially the ones that are in danger and in threat right now. Jesus said, and this is what he placed on my heart, Meditate frequently on the sufferings which I have undergone for your sake. And then nothing what you suffer for me will seem too great to you. You please me most when you meditate on the sorrowful passion. Join your sufferings, your little sufferings, to my sorrowful passion so that they may have infinite value before my majesty. You often call me your master. This is pleasing to my heart. But do not forget, my disciple, that you are a disciple of a crucified master. Lord, a crucified God. Let that one word be enough for you. You know what is contained in the cross. When Jesus revealed to me the name of our sisters, the, the, the name years and years ago before I had any concept that God would call me to lead, to start up a new community of women of which I knew nothing, he called them the sisters of Jesus' merciful passion. This now today, this morning in prayer, makes sense to me because they are focused on the merciful passion his mercy. Now listen to this. My, soul, my daughter, tell souls that I am giving them my mercy as a defense. I myself am fighting for them and am bearing the just anger of my Father. Let us be mindful and focused as we pray and call down the mercy of God on the people that are suffering and facing death, annihilation. And one of the, the things that I saw it was a mother holding her, like looked like a two-year-old child, and covering him 
to keep him from getting attacked. Covering him with her body to keep him from being killed. My God, I pray for your mercy to come down upon all the people in this world that are being faced with death, our brothers and sisters, all of the children, all of the women and men, our brothers and sisters, no matter where they are, that are being persecuted and faced with annihilation. We have a call as the beloved of Christ to pray. The whole world must pray. And my God, of all times, in the time of this pandemic, when the, the world should be engulfed with mercy and compassion from each and every one, no matter where you stand on the spectrum, these are the children of God, our brothers and sisters. So today, and going forward, let us pray, matching or uniting whatever suffering we're suffering, our own sickness, our own heartbreaks, our own abandonment, whatever the case may be. Unite them to the crucified Christ. To his pick a pick a sore on, on Jesus's pick a wound on his body and unite your suffering to his passion and with that passion and suffering pray for those in this world that are facing death annihilation because they are Christian and pray for our government leaders across the board I don't care where they where they stand across the board pray for them that God would move their hearts to compassion and to protect the people. Because we must. You saw that two-year-old, the mother, wherever she's at, God bless her, that brought her kid up here as she was receiving communion, teaching him. God bless that mother. Let us all be mothers that aren't too afraid to bring our children to church. But let us not be the people who persecute or give bad looks to the children that do come to church. That's how people learn. This is how human beings are. You learn by, by, by practicing. So let us all practice what God has taught us to the fullest. May God have mercy on all of us and pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. And if you have to leave, you can leave. We're going to pray the chaplet now. God love you.